Yeah, what's going on? No water today, so it might be uh, a quick one. This time, for real. Um, this is actually the main part of the previous two. As I record this one, the second part should be should be premiering tonight or this evening. That was about the quotas. And this all segued into Tariq Nasheed once again. Too many Negroes are thinking that Tariq Nasheed is some type of freedom fighter uh, or act black activist. He's not any of these things. That's why he's always online. He's not going out in the streets to do a damn thing. And the only reason why he even did those DC reparations bullshit was because he got paid. And it's to prompt him up to make it look like he's a leader so he can get try to get more money out of it. And it's sad every time I listen to Tariq Nasheed's lives, which have been increasing to a great degree, mainly because of these elections or selections. So he has to ramp it up because it's tomorrow. So you know what, what day it is by the time this one premieres, which I, hopefully I'll get it out tomorrow, maybe. Uh, so he has to get everything he can to get in to campaign for the conservatives. Um, again, you, you know how it goes. I, I said this for years. If they weren't politically aligned or paid mercenaries, then... They wouldn't be talking about the shit at all. They just mention it and keep it moving. They wouldn't keep on beating the shit to death. That's why you don't hear me talking about who you should vote for, who you shouldn't vote for, what they're going to do, what they're not going to do. Because like I said, if you live to see at least two presidents, so-called presidents that you can clearly remember, the game should be formulating it in your head by that time. You should start realizing, hold up, how come no matter what president, so-called president, is placed into the White House, how come shit never changes? It's the same shit. Doesn't matter the party. How come the successor always continues on, <clears throat> especially with the international shit, because that's the main mission. How can they always continue on with the international shit started by the previous president? So the previous two presidents. How can they never just change it? Now, again, I know politics is boring. A lot of people try to act like they're really into it because it's supposed to be popular every now and then when it's a popular talking point or it gets you views. But you can listen to the people. They don't really know what the fuck they're talking about to begin with. But when you examine John F. Kennedy. Yeah, we got to keep bringing him up because that's the turning point in history. Just like the Moors defeat 1492, that was a turning point in this country. Two primary turning points happened. And one of them was not the revolution. <clears throat> First one was the Civil War. That was the turning point. Second one, John F. Kennedy. Getting killed. If you notice with JFK versus other presidents, he did not continue with the previous president. In his case, Eisenhower, but more importantly, Vice President Richard Nixon had started and the CIA had begun. He did not continue. To do what they had planned out and hoped to put together through John Kennedy. As I said it many times, it's clear that the CIA tried to force his hand into doing what they wanted him to do. But he had in his mind, I'm going to do it this way, because obviously, if you're a president, 
the, the, the rules say that you can do it this way, you can do it that way. You don't have to do it the way somebody else says it, but when they kill you, I, I mean, shit, not too much you can do about that after that. But after that, every president just carried on the same mission. So there's domestic, then there's international shit. Some people might think that domestic shit is more important. But the international shit is actually more important. That is when you're a powerful country. Or you're like the UK, you got an empire. But when you're a third world country, your domestic shit is more important. Or it should be more important. Because your international shit, you're not going to gain power internationally unless it's you got to have a strong military. That's the bottom line. That's why you see who's at the UN Security Council. Fucking empires. And motherfuckers armed with nuclear weapons. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it is. That's the bottom line. You get nuclear weapons. Now, every, every, even the US, they'll say, they won't say they ain't going to go to war. They're just going to say, well, we got X amount of nuclear weapons. We could destroy the earth and all that kind of bullshit. I don't care what they say about nuclear weapons. I say if they detonated all of them at the same time all over the earth, the shit won't destroy the earth. And they say to destroy all life on earth, that's a lie. That's a scare tactic. Now, I'm not one of those people that's going around saying that nuclear weapons don't exist. Those are people who haven't proven their case. But I just say the capability of delivering nuclear weapons by international in, international uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. That has not been proven because I have not seen a demonstration. It's hard to get a demonstration of that shit given the different boundaries of, of the uh, countries. Now you got people like the British and even the Americans. They could detonate one or, or demonstrate that they can detonate one via missile through one of their little jump off islands, but even with those jump off islands that they have, all they ever did was drop the bomb on the water, underground, or on land. Never via missile. I've only seen, and I searched this shit too, I've only seen nuclear weapons drop from artillery, planes, or buried in ground, or above ground. Never from missiles. Why not? Again, I, I, I always said this before. And I talked about it with the bricks in the last video. Why would the U.S. continue to be. Allow China. To do the business that they're doing. If they're communists. You know, Russia is not communist anymore, but look how they've been sanctioned. Reading these articles about Super Micro and NVIDIA. Bought a Super Micro product back in the day when they were making a few consumer products that were decent for the eye. Now it's just basically professional. So they're having problems. Then I, I saw the bank that they go through. I, I was just curious because I was like, damn, where do people put in billions of dollars in, in, in a bank at? And they got something called Cathay Bank. So this is how the Asians see the Asians are smart. Unlike uh, African, Caribbean, black Americans. See, black Americans, if somebody come out with a bank, they're going to call it... Uh, Jackson Bank, Jackson and Jackson, a black owned bank. I tell, I tell you time and time again, there's no benefit to calling your business black owned. There's only a detriment to calling it black owned. Just fucking come out with the business. You're not going to gain more people, more customers by saying it's black owned. You're trying to guilt trip black people <laughs> into being a customer. And you're going to alienate other people with more money. Unless the goal is just simply to say, I want black people, I want to control black people's money. 
But whatever the case is, you got the master banks owned by the you know who, small hats. So you'll never be able to get over because they control the banking system. They own it. But nonetheless, this Cathay Bank is a Chinese bank. Along with that HSBC and probably a few others. Super Micro, I think that's either a Chinese company or a uh, Hong Kong, a Taiwanese company. And if you've been reading up on that story, they've been trying to fudge their uh, financial books because I guess they've been fucking up, <laughs> to say the least. So, yeah, it's a Chinese bank. And that got me to thinking. I think they said the headquarters was in Los Angeles. Got me to thinking. This man being nosy or what? Got me to thinking. Why is there... First of all, if China is communist, what the fuck are they doing with banks? That's number one. I know some people say, oh, you need banks to run the country. Oh, this motherfucker ain't just staring at me. You're getting your shit and get the fuck on. Unless you're doing something sneaky. <laughs> shit. Anyway. If they're communists, what do they have banks for? Two. If they're communists, what is the West doing business with them for? They never explain this shit to you. But it's shit that should get you thinking. And wondering. What was the Cold War all about? I think what it was really all about was stockpiling weapons on both sides. For white power. The, the stabilized white power. Because uh, the... Uh, Colonies were breaking free. Not that. Don't mistake it for one bit and think that. Certain countries just broke free. Because they decided to fight back in, in the UK, France and these other places got scared. Well, France is different. France, they. Um, the, the people in their colonies actually did say, fuck it, let's go to war. And France got defeated. And a lot of their colonies, Vietnam, a prime example, even with uh, the Portuguese, you know, they had to fight. You check my Facebook. I think I sent it through Facebook or Instagram. One of the two. I don't know which one it is. I forgot. The, it was in India. Portuguese colony is on film. Portuguese colony in India. Because, you know, they didn't have the whole shit, just like the British didn't have the whole shit. They decided to fight back and they fought back military, m militarily and they whooped the asses of the Portuguese. See, French and, and, and Portuguese, they got their asses kicked by the colonies, which is embarrassing. See, the British, they didn't get their asses kicked because they said, you know what? Let's leave this country, that country, and the other country. We'll call this shit some commonwealth and we'll keep you on. And they were probably fearing uh, India and China anyway. Because they were growing stronger. And because, they're you know, the manpower. Especially China. India. I gotta admit, I haven't really examined their military to see what the strategy is. But a lot of people don't seem to want to fuck with them these days they, they have nuclear weapons but nuclear weapons are really offensive weapons they're not really defensive weapons so in the end they're not really going to do you any good unless you're looking to destroy a country but again India doesn't really have the capabilities to deliver it everywhere but after a while given the fact where they stand in the tech industry in the west they, they'll, they'll get there after a while <laughs> Which again, I always ask myself, well, what is the white man's game plan? He does everything to keep us there. But gives these other people 
everything. And I guess it's, it's about Asia. You know? And then that's why you got people like Elijah Muhammad coming with that Asiatic black man shit. Because he probably figured, you know, that'll uh, help them. Don't call yourself African. Call yourself Asiatic. That'll help the white man uh, respect you. So... That's what it's all about. So anyway, back to this Tariq Nasheed. He's been ramping up the calls, doing it almost every night, different times a night. I see where I missed one. <clears throat> he might have started at 2.35 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, God damn. I got he, he, he clearly had a, a schedule that he had to hit. <clears throat> and if he didn't hit it, he doesn't get paid. And again, as I listen... With these agents, these Coon uh, Iron Pyramid uh, agents, they got to entertain the trannies. See, there's no reason why he should be talking to a tranny. He keeps trying to act like he doesn't want to deal with the tranny and his idiotic listeners. They keep on thinking, man, why does he keep messing with this tranny? Why don't you stop being a fucking idiot and face the facts that this is what he must do? Just like Pan-Africanism strikes back. What do, you, what do you think? Random trannies just come out of nowhere? Ask yourself a question. Provided that you're not involved in that lifestyle. How often do you interact with a fucking tranny? And if you happen to run into one, do you even want to strike up a conversation with one? And in that T.S. Giselle's case, could you look a tranny, a man, Wearing a dress, makeup, and a tacky wig. Knowing he gets up every fucking morning. Trying to disguise his voice. Every fucking morning he gets up. He's got to grab his dick to go to, the, go to the bathroom. So he knows the shit is there. So no matter all the other shit they're pretending to do. He knows that he has a dick between his legs. And he knows what he has to do with the shit. So all the other bullshit, who gives a fuck about that? That's all bullshit. Can you really honestly say that you can have a fucking coherent conversation about serious issues with a maniac like that? This is what Tariq Nasheed does. He has political uh, uh, conversations with this individual, this maniac. The last show I heard, and this is how you know it's all fucking an act. He had the guy go talk about his history of gayness and, and, and being a tranny. Why are you concerned with that, Tariq Nashi? Because you gotta you gotta do it. That's why. Watch after this election. Selection goes by. Watch him change. Just like when the last one when Trump lost. He stopped talking about the shit for a while until he got rehired to start early in the propaganda. That's how it works. And other Negroes keep going into the... I, again, I don't care. Either side, they're both controlled by the small hats. But they're trying to get you to go into a conservative side and think, of yourself in an elitist way while trying to lead you on thinking that you're about to run into some money and get some reparations. I'll tell you what, conservatives, because they always say, we ain't giving you shit. You got to work hard for it. That's what they say. Give up the goddamn reparation. Then I, I bet you, you'll win black people over. But see, they don't want to do that. They don't want to give you any goddamn money or what you deserve. They just want you to start Getting away from the Democrats. See. This is what their coon agents. Want you to do. They want you to think. See you, you, you're you, not Tariq Nasheed. You're not living in a mansion. You don't have access to. Free monies per month. And you don't have to worry about the IRS on your back. That's not you. That's him. And that's whoever else is getting paid off. The Republicans have always been a 
elitist, if not premium, political party to say that you're a part of. That's why you see Asians of all types when they get rich. Well, they usually start off rich anyway. That's why they're usually Republican. Because it's about money. Not about uh, nothing else. Poor people want social change. Rich people want financial gains. They don't care about social changes because they control shit. You think police? Now, a lot of cops do get paid a lot of money. But they can get fired, too. Do you think these mega rich people who own all these fucking buildings, you see? You really think that they let cops tell them what to do? Do you really believe that? They tell the cops what to do because what they do runs the country. That's why they don't fuck with these people. That's like a security guard at a bank trying to, you know, investigate the bank manager and shit. You're just not going to do that. They're not going to let you get that close. So Tariq Nasheed is living in a different world. He's not living in the hood. He lied and said he only lives around East Indians and some Hispanics. That's, that was a lie. And I see that the video, I don't think the video is up. Cause I've been going through some videos. I got to put that shit up. I, I swear to you, this goddamn uh, rumble, man, this shit is so fucking slow. And the upload, not not that upload from my computer to the uh, thing, but once they start processing the shit, pain in the ass. That's why you, I took a break from that shit, man. It's a pain in the ass. And of course, with YouTube, you put shit up, they start taking shit down, uh, uh, putting the shit on private, or even, you know, deleting the video and they don't even inform me about the shit. Shit is crazy. It's like they don't want you to know that they fucking suppressed the video. Until you just happen to say, let me go through some of these videos for whatever reason. And then you start seeing what the fuck has been going on. I mean, damn, at least Rumble hasn't suppressed shit. But it looks like... uh. You know, there's a, a a cap, at least for people on my level at Rumble right now. Well, I'm, uh, again, I'm glad I'm getting the views that I am getting, but, you know, it's going to be a while before I get into the thousands. I also know that, uh, I noted that um, there was a referral link for Rumble for people to sign up. I got two or three people to sign up through that link. I was supposed to get paid through that. They even showed the people who signed up. I'm like, where's the money at? No money. They can't be doing that kind of shit. Can't be doing that kind of shit. You, you're trying to help them out. Trying to help me out too, but I'm trying to help them out to get more people comfortable to go over there. Because, you know, I'm not going to lie. It took me a while to get comfortable to go over there, <laughs> you know? And I understand that. Because, you know, that's why people are trying to sue Google and the government's trying to break Google's monopoly on the internet up now because, you know, they shut other people out because a lot of people keep thinking Google is the internet. And like I said before, whenever you search for a video, it's usually going back to YouTube. Except when I use Bing. That's why I've been finding a lot of these rare movies. Searching Bing. I'm like, damn, I, the email is not even needed too much anymore. Except when I want some 4K. Found this movie called One Eye Charlie, which was uh, Richard Roundtree. I'm like, oh, damn, I never even heard of that shit. Got a hold of that. Got a hold of some Japanese shit from the 70s. I don't even know what the fuck it is, but, you know, I like a lot of those Japanese movies. It's just crazy. Uh, what's this other movie? A lot of Kung Fu movies. Like I said before, put in Venom Mob on Wikipedia and check those movies out. Um, I didn't realize they made so many. But um, Tariq Nasheed is not a black activist. He's not an activist at all. He's not in the politics. He's a dimwit like Taharka Bay who 
learns as they go along and as they learn from the mistakes and the lies that they tell and people point it out when he's on his uh, spaces. That's why he hits the mute button often. Because when he gets found out and they call him out on the shit, he hits the mute button. And then when they don't submit to his changing the topic, then they'll say, ah, oh, you know why I had enough of you. Get out of here. You, you, you talking babble. Or you're being, uh, what's, what's that other shit he says? You're having a bad faith argument. What the fuck kind of bullshit is that? That's just some more bullshit to say. I got to hang your ass up before you uh, call me out. That's all that shit is. But again, when black people, I don't know if you've listened to the spaces. He's been coming with too many. I, I can't even keep track of the shit now. But he has to keep it going because we're at the last end of this uh, selection. So if you notice when black people call up, and I've been saying this for years, but now we're talking a different thing now because then now these people call up, they keep talking about Brother Tariq. They talk to him about serious shit concerning black people, what what's going on in their area, uh, what uh, local politicians getting in trouble. All that kind of shit. You know, some serious shit affecting black people. Then he's like, all right, brother. All right. Hangs him up. Then when uh, Dr. Davinsky calls up a supposed white supremacist who I think that's the one that's married to a, a African lady. I don't know about you, but I don't know what the fuck kind of uh, white supremacist is married to a fucking African. I mean, are you people actually fooled by all this shit? This is a joke. None of these white supremacists call up and call the man a nigger. Except for that one guy that uh, I think he was calling for out of Australia, New Zealand or somewhere. And why are all these motherfuckers calling from other countries to begin with? Why does Tariq Nashi entertain politics with these British people, black or white? Why do you worry about what their, their opinions of reparations are? Their opinions mean shit. Soon as they comes talking that shit, hang up. Because they can't influence shit one way or the other. They can't vote on nothing. Why are they worried about U.S. elections? We're not worried about British elections. So some show, The Jackal on Peacock. I didn't watch the show, so the, the ad for it. I'm like, man, another British. Why are they all over the place? You know I'm tired of these people. But you keep thinking that they're not trying to merge the two. The other day I was on the ESPN website and they had a breaking news about some soccer manager. That's them trying to force the shit on us. Because soccer, they don't even talk about hockey like that. The WNBA, that that, co that also is part of uh, the last video. WNBA, soccer, they keep trying to force these shits on us. Give a fuck about no goddamn soccer. And sometimes if you read the line article with just the text, they try to trick you into uh, clicking on it by mentioning the name that's popular in football. And then you click on it and you find out it's soccer. Why do they have to do that? Because they want you. They're trying. It's like the, the football in London and, and Germany. They keep trying to get them into the football. And they keep trying to get us into the soccer because that's what they like. So that's that one world government, new world order shit. They got to understand you can't, you can't expect everybody to like one thing and only one thing. They want to take away choices. But I tell you this, if the United States goes, you think about how Europe was before the United States. See if you want to go back to that perpetual war, if not, Genocide. They used to say the Romans used to kill 30,000 people a month. That's what they said. You could bet who <laughs> a lot of those people were. Uh, so. 
A lot of people, I put up that painting of Queen Elizabeth I. A lot of people probably didn't notice that air before to see that that was makeup. See, it's the good thing that artist who painted that was pretty sharp because he even got the uh, reveal of the eyebrows underneath that makeup. If you look closely, but look at her ear, you can see that that's not a black, that's not a white woman. And look at that kinky hair. Try to find a picture of her father. They only show pictures of her mother. They say she got her kinky hair from her father. So, I mean, come on. If you're half white with hair like that, you already know the deal. They've been lying to us and hiding shit from us for the longest time. But black uh, masons keep the, uh, they support white supremacy. I keep trying to hold out, hoping that it's going to be to our benefit, but it doesn't seem like that so far. But, um, so when black people call up, they talk about serious shit that they hear Tariq Nashi talk about, but he glosses over a lot of shit. If you listen to him closely, glosses over the shit. He just needs Negroes to be inspired so they can give him money so he can peddle his uh, products to him, to them. You notice he doesn't peddle his products to the white supremacists, but for some odd reason, when they call up, they always uh, promote his products because they're not white supremacists. They're part of the uh, order and the technique to uh, trick you. Again, real white supremacists aren't, they're not going to be concerned with a Tariq Nashi because he's a nobody. He's not a threat to anybody. He's, a, he's just a fucking clown. But again, when black people call up with some serious shit, because they keep thinking that he's a black activist and that he that if they present something to him, he's going to get involved. Now, he might bullshit and say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, I'm telling you, people, I'm telling you, that's 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 the business. All that kind of shit trying to act like he's uh, for real. But you could tell when he's for real, when he's not for real, because if he cuts the conversation short and doesn't want to hear anymore, that t that's all you need to know right there. Why does he want to keep listening to what these white supremacists, so-called white supremacists, have to say? You know, and they're from other countries on top of that. That's the key thing. So whatever the fuck they're thinking, he shouldn't give a fuck because they're not from here. He doesn't care what these black people have to say. That's why you got to stop. You, you might get entertained. But see, when you want something done or you're thinking he's going to contribute money make an appearance, speak on your behalf, or whatever the cause is that you're talking about, he's not going to do it. He hangs up on you, and you still act like you love the guy. He does, When he hangs up on you when you're talking about some serious shit, that means he doesn't want to be bothered with the shit. Because he's not going to do anything. So why do you keep reaching out to him? You think the word, he's going to get the word out. He has you on the air on a fucking free Twitter space. He actually is getting paid off that too, by the way. He won't even let you speak to get your shit out. But if you call up talking about nonsense, notice who he gives the airtime to, the white supremacists, the so-called tethers. He gives them all the airtime. And all he's doing is going back and forth. He's kissing the white man's ass. And he's uh, coon babbling to the tethers. So half of those tethers are just fucking around with him. Just so they can trip him up. The other half might be serious. But it's going to result in nothing. But him being a, a, a hater of black people. And a lover of the white man. One of them recently was calling him out about his uh, white family. And of course, he doesn't like hearing that kind of shit. He, he keeps trying to convince himself that he has a a, <laughs> a black wife. And then he talked about his mother. You can't come out. I said it years for years. You cannot come out of a white pussy and claim to be black. All the way black. You're still half white, even if you are half black. You got people like Dak Prescott. Looked like a regular black man. But see, when that Jerry Jones shit came out, he told you what the fuck he was. <laughs> a 
So he can, that's why people like Tariq Nasheed can keep talking that my wife is black shit all he wants. Watch an event come out. She'll say something. I ain't black. I'm only half white. I'm only half black. Michi X has gone through this and said this shit. And people still go to her. Zaza Ali has said this shit. She's lost her audience because, you know, her scamming came out. So it is what it is. So the shit will come out at some point in time. When people get pissed off and when, when it comes out, no matter what the circumstances are, that's how they really feel deep inside. It's just like when you have arguments with people, you start calling them names, they call you names, and then they say, well, that's why this, that, the other, that's why your mother this, that, the other, and that's why you, uh, I'm going to tell that you scamming, doing this and doing that, the other, <laughs> because that, that's the real shit. That's the real feelings. You know, you might change it up later on, but those are the real feelings. And when Tariq Nasheed is on his spaces, that's how you could tell what's important to him and what is unimportant. When white people call up, he starts kissing their asses. So that's important to him. Hating on Democrats and Kamala Harris. He gets serious about that because that's where he's getting paid to do. He gets serious about talking about tethers. He could talk about, he could joke around with the white supremacists, but as soon as the tether calls up, he's in full hate mode, KKK mode. He gets serious. Soon as black Americans call up talking about FBA, B1, they keep saying all this shit. You got to understand. FBA is marketing and money. Tariq Nasheed is not B1. He's not a black activist. He's not even pro black. Case in point, his family. And you cannot keep trying to deny and delude yourself about this shit. I'm not saying don't go and mess with uh, somebody who's half white. That's not what I'm saying. Zaza Ali, she's looking good. I, I deal with her. I don't know how trustworthy she is, but I'd at least throw down with her, uh, you know, if nothing else. I don't know if I could trust her, but, you know, <laughs> should I at least do my thing? But um, I'm not saying don't mess with somebody who's mixed because that's... These days, you can't even uh, really avoid that, to be honest with you. What I'm saying is, when it comes to Negroes like Tariq Nasheed, who's supposed to be pro-black and talks about bed winches, tragic mulattoes, uh, he talks about people that make up what his wife is, but when it comes to his so-called wife, but when it comes to her, because I don't even think they're married because... She would have to take on his last name, which obviously can't be a legal name. But you cannot talk about other people and try to, you know, say that your wife is, is an exception. So-called wife. He says, my mother-in-law is white. Okay. He doesn't like people going on and on about that, but he'll go on and on about that shit with somebody else. Like with the so-called tethers. He'll go on and on and on about how they're tethered. They're no good. They musty. Uh, the hair is no good. The hair is peppercorn. You know, everything that the white man has said, I don't like about niggas. Peppercorn hair, skin, lips. Every damn thing. Clothes, intelligence. Culture. I swear to you, I said it time and time again. If you took Tariq Nasheed, why is he friendly with all these so-called suspected white supremacists and white nationalists? 
because he's down with it. They're down with it. Why? Again, Tariq Nasheed is a nobody in politics. In politics. Why do they even deal with him? He's a so-called influencer. But when you get past his little niche in the internet and on YouTube, as far as the grand scheme of things on YouTube, he's not on the radar. And then people on the internet in general, he's not on the radar. That's why most people had not heard of him. So you got to get into certain circles where he's at. Then you can say, people might say that they heard of him. It's like, uh, when I bring up some tech talk, some people may not even know what I'm talking about because they're not in those circles. So they're like, I don't know what that's all about. And I don't give a fuck. That's how people feel about Tariq Nasheed. They don't know who he is. If, if they don't see him on TV constantly, they don't give a damn. But that's why he was on Fox News a few times because they put him out there. And I said over the years, if you see a Negro on Fox News, 10 to 1, they're coon agents. Just like the new Black Panther Party, Malik Zulu Shabazz. And yes, yes, yes. Khalid Muhammad, when he was with the new Black Panther Party. I don't remember him being on Fox News when he was with the Nation of Islam. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But when he was with the new Black Panther Party, he was definitely on Fox News. So... Black people, if you don't have the man's direct contact information and not an email, email, you sh as you should know, that's what people give when they say, you know, I don't want no motherfucker calling me. I want to be able to screen your ass, so you email me. When you meet a female, instead of what's your number, let me get your email because that's a little more uh, you know, you're not, doesn't seem like you're trying to impose yourself on her. Then your emailer come up with some bullshit. Then say, you know what? I'm tired of this email. I, I need to call you. What's, what's your number? <laughs> All that kind of shit. You know, you know how this shit goes. So you don't have the man's number. That's why I talk about I'm talking about him because he does some things that Tariq does. Um, He says, you want to debate? Call me. I'm like, man, what do you need to call people for? Do you need to train to have a debate? Or even a discussion? They're not ready. They say they're ready, but they're not. none of them are ready. And before these spaces, even during when he started these spaces, he wasn't really challenging people or allowing people to challenge him. But... Like I said before, these spaces, are, these are training grounds, training camps for Tariq Nasheed to try to polish his debating skills. But see, the problem is he lies so goddamn much when he's outside of his controlled environment. He can't win because he can't mute. And when you can't mute, you can't control. And when, when people are able to continue their attack instead of getting cut off, now you had a disadvantage, but this is what the white man does. That's why, again, when you deal with stuff like the JFK assassination and shit, you get in, you're forced to get into FBI, CIA, even local police tactics and, and, and clandestine uh, tactics. And you can see how they use agents, use uh, all types of industry to spread propaganda like a communist country. You just be shocked. I mean, I gave you books to uh, check out. Turns out I bought one two times by mistake, but <laughs> David Wise was the author. I'm sure he's probably a small hat because I notice when it comes to all that top shit, it's usually small hats. And of course, part of it is they always got to make sure that they steer whatever shit is that's sneaky and low down. And against the United States, they got to make sure that they write the book so they can steer it away from themselves and keep it on a mysterious government. 
You know? That's what they got to do. But nonetheless, all these CIA front companies are owned by the small hat. So I should tell you something. Like I said, the small hats are the ones who created the goddamn CIA. Because the, they own the banks. The banks own the corporations. And the corporations and the universities created the CIA. That's why the CIA does the bidding of whatever is in, in, in the best interest of the corporations. That's why when they want to take out leaders across the globe or say we got to invade this country because such and such is fucking up the gold deposits or not allowing us access to uh, some fruit or some mining or whatever it is, because that's international business. You got, you know, you, whatever the business is, you got to get the raw materials from someplace. That's what colonial colonialization, that's what that shit was all about. Take over country like, like the British with the tea. You know, tea time. They got that from China. They, they didn't come up with that shit. Then they controlled the tea market out of India and other spots in China. I, you know, only until recently did I learn that Lipton was a British tea company. I was like, God damn, I thought that was American. Corner the market on tea. Now, if they can't get access to the tea, one of two things, one of three things happens. Lipton is either charged a lot more, which means that we get charged a lot more for tea. Lipton doesn't like it. <laughs> and they, and, or they get cut off from the tea. Or Lipton doesn't like it. And then they say, hey, we got to go uh, uh, secure the, the, the tea. Or this product comes to an end. But that's tea. That's a leisurely shit. A lot of people make tea. And of course, other products affect, you know, resellers. But see, when it comes to shit like that's needed for a country to run. Like, uh, you know, computer parts. And parts, the raw materials to make the computers, uh, steel, plastics, gas, oil, all that type of shit. So that's where the CIA comes into play and they say, they do their studies, surveillance, and all that shit. They throw the shit down to the, they already t usually talk to the Congress and Senate before they talk to the president. Then they go throw it down to the president and say, president, this is what's going down. So we got we got to rock the house on these people. A dumb president like Kamala Harris, and I'm saying that because she doesn't strike me as somebody with international uh, uh, acumen, at least for the U U.S. Anyway, they plop some shit down. Say we gotta we gotta go into uh, Sri Lanka. They fucking around. We gotta take over the country, at least for the short term, so we can short secure these crops and and and, and the. Whatever the fuck else they got going on. She might say, okay, well, looks good to me. I'll sign off on it. Okay, but what about, what about the uh, Congress? Don't worry about that. We got that. Now, you flip that, you come with a JFK who was highly educated despite his Boston accent. You bring that shit to him. He's like, I got I to gotta study this shit see what the political ramifications are about this shit. Now the CIA is like, man, what the fuck, man? What the fuck are we, we, we not really coming here to ask you. This is what they say, might be saying to themselves, motherfucker, you got to do it. What the fuck? Why aren't you going to do it? <laughs> motherfucker, this is what we present to you. This is what, what the fuck we got to do. So JFK is like, I get back to you on that shit. So they're probably like, man, we give this motherfucker an opportunity to see what the fuck is up. As long as he does the right thing. Okay. But once we come back to him, we got to tell him, Mr. President, time is of the essence. We got to move on this shit with the quickness. Especially before they change leadership. Or we might not have the opportunity again. You know, or whatever it takes. Then if the president's like, I don't want to say no. Because he doesn't want to hurt their feelings and get them mad. But this doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> Now they got to come with another strategy. And of course, with JFK, the extreme strategy was let's get, 
uh, we're going to get rid of the motherfuckers in these other countries and we're going to get rid of your ass. That's the, that's the extreme uh, reaction. And it's all because the shit that happens in other countries. Watch Tariq she start talking about this knowledge I'm giving this guy. I'm giving this man some knowledge now. This is one of my specialties right here. The shit that happened because they'll they don't mind getting rid of a Kennedy because you need the shit that goes on in the rest of the world and you can't have them all be rich. Somebody's gonna get paid because like it, you eat a cashew, somebody has to go get the cashews, and it's not gonna be a rich man because they're too they're not gonna waste their time doing that. That's why you gotta get somebody really poor in these countries I think cashews come out of Thailand or somewhere and they're poisonous too they, they gotta take care of those shits those shits are poisonous that's the funny part uh, get the cashews bring them uh, here get coffee you know we're so used to drinking coffee whenever we want it we don't realize this shit comes from all over the fucking world you watch videos on Ethiopian coffee, which is supposed to be the best coffee. And they ship the raw shit out. You know, bugs, insects, you know, get trapped into that shit and carry it over here. Uh, all types of shit. You know, the basic shit like fruit. You know, when you check your bananas, you see where the shit, the shit comes from. And I'm sure you always ask yourself what I might ask uh, myself. Damn, how the fuck they pick the bananas from South America, get it up here to the grocery store, and the shit is still unripened. And they they get it here just in time. Throughout the United States. I said, damn. But the same thing with coffee. And coffee really is price similar to cocaine almost you know <laughs> and speaking of that drugs cocaine heroin those those are other cash crops that these uh governments deal in and people might say nah drugs are bad yeah they, they know that shit that's why if you didn't take the shit the shit wouldn't be worth shit but since you're a fucking drug addict <laughs> the shit has value And nobody's ever going to stop dealing drugs because the shit is free. And what I mean by that shit grows from the ground. It's free. <laughs> you don't have to invest shit in, into it, really. Just grow the shit, cultivate the shit. Do what you have to do. I mean, cocaine seems to be easier to develop than the fucking uh, heroin. But the shit is free. I mean, as long as the shit grows on trees, literally... There's money growing on trees. It's going to have a value. And you can't tell me nobody who's supposed to be legit is just going to say, ah, oh, man, that's drug proceeds, drug deal. Uh, we can't do that. I'm too righteous for that. Nothing. Just like coffee. You can go anywhere to get some fucking coffee. Whether it's some cheap ass coffee or some expensive coffee. You can get that anywhere in this country. Just like you can go get you some fentanyl, some coke, some heroin, crack, weed, anywhere in this country. <clears throat> Do you think they could deliver every variety of drugs in every fucking area of this fucking country without the government doing it? Not possible. And those busts that you see, that's either rivals or people who got busted by mistake. But you know they're not destroying those drugs because the shit is worth too much money. It's like saying capturing a ton of gold and say these motherfuckers smuggled the gold, illegal gold. And because the shit is illegal, we're going we gonna to fucking destroy the whole gold. We, we, we're destroying the shit. You know that shit ain't happening. With drugs, you, you know they usually capture the fucking... Drugs and the goddamn money. You think they're going to burn the money? Come on. 
They never tell you what they do with the goddamn money. They just say they put it back into the system to help pay for more uh, uh, policing efforts. Then if that's the case, you know, if I was in control of a state or something like that, okay, you captured a uh, uh, $100 million in cash, right? Which means that there must have been $200 million in cash originally. You know that shit. You know no cop is going to let that shit slip by. Shit, motherfuckers got that much money. Yeah, got a warehouse full of money, goddamn it. I'm taking as much as my car can fill up. <laughs> and then whatever the fuck is left, that's what they had. <laughs> you know, no government is just going to uh, just look the other way. Hey, if, if they say you captured $100 million in drug proceeds, if I'm in charge of a state, then that means whatever the budget is for law enforcement, I'm going to deduct $100 million. And if you cry about it and tell me, no, we, we can't cut the budget in addition to this money. We know what the deal is. But see, drugs, they're valuable because they're illegal. That's what makes their value go up. You look at these places. I've been watching videos, man. A lot of auditors, too. You watch these... uh videos when they go to these weed spots because people are robbing weed spots too the, the legal ones but see what's funny is they legalize weed in places but you got to have a license to deal which means more startup money and the shit costs more and it gets taxed and all that kind of shit And if you notice with a lot of these videos, people coming in and out of weed spots, they're highly embarrassed. Why are you filming me? They get mad because somebody's filming them going into a weed spot, but then they don't get mad when motherfuckers, you buy weed off the street. But see what they do. If weed is legal, you shouldn't have to have a license to deal weed. Because what they do, that means, okay, you got to have a license in a store. You're the only one who can deal weed, but everybody else who doesn't have a store and a license can't deal weed? That's fucking insane. And discriminatory. So you can't sell weed, but everybody who has a store got a, uh, they can, they're the only ones who can sell weed. It's like when people are plumbers and electricians, you can't do it without a license. You, you can't practice medicine without a license. That's just so that the government can control and watch over you and ultimately for the banks so they can know how much money you're making. That's what the IRS is about. It's about how much you're making and how you're making it. Because if you didn't have to report to an IRS, which you shouldn't have to, that's how this country was founded. Then that means they can't keep track of what you got how much you got and how you got it. That's all it's for. It's to keep you in debt to the bankers. Because like I said, this economy was created by them. They didn't stumble. I, I can't stress it enough. They didn't stumble onto the economy and said, I'm going to become a player in this economy. They created the shit. And they created it to benefit the house, which is, are the small ads. That's why every time you watch sports, they talk about the owner. I was watching the Vince Carter uh, uh, jersey retire retirement uh, ceremony. See the owners of the team, small hats. Golden State Warriors, small hats. All NFL teams, small hats. You think this is a motherfucking coincidence? It's not a coincidence. It's because they own the money. So, of course, they're going to make up the bulk of the billionaires. Mark Cuban, my man who owns the Clippers. And I was watching, you know, I could watch all the games on the NBA on a given night. I want to see the Clippers. And now the Lakers and Clip going to the Clippers, that's, one, that's a game I got to see. 
I think that's not happening until June 9th or 19th or something like that. Because that's that's going to be a motherfucking world premiere. First time in history, I think. Yeah, the first time in history. The L.A. Lakers are going to go play against the L.A. Clippers in another arena. They're going to be the visitors. That's a world premiere. That's why I got to check that out. Now, the Clippers Stadium is nice, but I I, I keep observing things. I, I like to observe shit because I always said to myself, I don't think that the Clippers can hang on their own. You know, I don't think they got the fan base like that. Because you, you, you're in the town, see the Mets and Yankees, that's different. Because you, the Mets were still successful without the Yankees. You know, Mets won some titles and been to a few World Series. And the Mets really represent Brooklyn and Queens and Long Island. And the Yankees represent everywhere, really. <laughs> but the Clippers, you know, you got the Lakers that, <laughs> I mean, it's not even close to, you know, Clippers aren't nowhere close to what the Lakers have been. They're not even where the Mets are at. The Clippers are totally unaccomplished franchise. The Sacramento Kings, like I always tell people. Go back for, for, far enough, even they won a title. Way, way, way back. The Atlanta Hawks even won a title. Way, way, way back. I think they were in St. Louis in the 50s or something like that. It may have been light years ago. But see, even the Clippers, they don't even have a title from 50, 60 years ago. They don't have it. So... I just knew that the Lake. I'm like, man, how are you going to go from sharing, being a roommate with the Lakers? You might get you some residual uh, uh, fan bases because people are going to be like, all right, I'm familiar with the arena. Ticket prices might be cheaper. And it's cool when the Lakers and Clipper, Clippers battle each other and they're in the, in, the, in the same home that they play in. You know, shit like that. You know, people go in and they say, you know, this, this is what I like. This is cool. But now, you got to travel in another town. Yeah, it's in the area where the Lakers used to play at. And the stadium is devastating. Though. I mean, this shit is unbelievable, especially for an NBA stadium. It's unbelievable on the outside, unbelievable on the inside. How many people want to travel there? How many people like the Clippers enough to travel there? See, the Lakers are still in a spot where people are like, you know, I, I, I can do some other shit, you know? <laughs> but the Clippers, I was watching the camera angles, like when they do the free throws or they show the ground level and then they show up. I noticed how they, they've been, probably been instructed to cut quickly like they do with the WNBA because I see that those seats aren't filled. See, now, towards the... End of the second quarter, you know, a lot of people might start going to the bathroom, start to get something to eat. Beginning of the third quarter, they might, you know, still be out there going to the bathroom, waiting in line, going to the bathroom, getting something to eat, making phone calls, just checking shit out. But by the middle of the third quarter, they should all be back in their seats. And that's what I was watching. Now, of course, you know, it all depends on the team that they're playing, too. Now, that's another thing to look out for. When the Lakers come and they can't sell out, then what? See, that's why they re-signed Kawhi Leonard because they said they need a superstar on their squad opening up this new stadium. That's why they kept um, Harden, even though he is really, uh, you know, he, he's not good. But they said, hey, man, it's somebody. Because if they didn't have Harden right now, they don't really have any marquee name <clears throat> in their own stadium but the the guy uh that owns the team i think the man's worth like over a hundred billion dollars and yes he's a small hat too so that billion dollar billion and a half dollar stadium for a basketball stadium you know that's what an nfl arena costs 
these days. Spending that on a basketball arena is unheard of. But the man got so much fucking money. He can just throw that shit at the money and at the team and it's not going to it's not going to it's not going to dent his fortune. That's how much money the man has. Just like the Mets owner. Another small hat. Got so goddamn much money. I mean, it should be clear. I mean, what the deal is by now. But, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, some of these rich guys, they think just like the uh, Pan Carolina Panthers owner. And you see the Saints coach got fired. A lot of these rich guys, they're like, man, I'm rich. I'm successful. Just throw some more money at the shit. I should get the results that I'm looking for. But see, they don't know sports. All they know is I'm rich, I'm spoiled. Throw money. Money will come back. I would bet you, I didn't even check the books on this uh, Clippers organization, but I bet you they're in debt. Even though the boss, the, the owner can eat all that debt. It ain't, it ain't nothing. But I bet you they're in debt. You still got to run your business, right? Though you don't want, want the shit bleeding. And of course, they have other venues at that uh, stadium, but I still didn't think that that was the right thing to do. Now, if he had owned the Lakers and said, I want my own venue away from the Clippers, then I, I, I could say, hey, that audience is going to follow the Lakers. But the Clippers, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of rough, man. That's kind of rough. I I guess the White Sox and the in the uh uh what's the other one? The Cubs. I think they they got their own stadiums, right? I think they do. Knicks and the Nets got their own stadium. Looks like the Nets. I can't really tell because they darken a lot of that net stadium up, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell exactly what they're doing. But I'm sure that they must have been selling out something when they had uh Durant, Harden, and um. Can't believe I forgot my man's name now. Come on, Kyrie Irving. Um, anyway, let me get back to this main point. Now we had an hour and seven minutes. Uh, so Tariq Nasheed is not a black activist. The people who call him, you really, you should stop doing it to yourself. The man does not care about your problems. He doesn't care about black people's problems. He doesn't care about anybody else but himself. And then after himself, then it's his uh, immediate family, mother, kids, his woman. And of course, he has to care about his white, suspected white supremacist in-laws. <laughs> And they are suspected white supremacists, right? Because that's what they all are. And again, I always tell people, Tariq Nasheed's mother, mother-in-law, white mother-in-law, she's not the only white person in that family. His so-called wife, she has other white family members, it ain't just her. Then, of course, his sister has a, a suspected white supremacist, uh, white Latino, as he calls them. See, this is what he calls people. But then when it's about him, people call him out on the shit. Now, all of a sudden, these people aren't Latino. Uh, they're not white. Uh, they're not white supremacists. Some of these people, I wish, because I think some of these people have been listening to my videos. And they've been presenting some of the issues I raised up with him. Raise this up with this guy. How come your mother-in-law is not a suspected white supremacist? How come you don't even want to mention your uh, brother-in-law? Since he's because he talks about these so-called Latinos, you see how he does. How come that doesn't apply to your brother-in-law and his family? And on top of that, how come you to your family won't marry black people, including you? But see, this is what he does, what a lot of black, supposed black activists do. Niggas like Professor Griff, too. I don't give a damn how old that man is. And yeah, that's me. When you see his videos, that's me dissing his ass. Because I ain't like that shit he pulled. 
So I'm going to keep this in his ass. He gets with nothing but white, half white. You know the routine. They all do that shit. And then when you call them out on it, they just say she's black. The white man says she's black, so be it. But her attributes are not black or African, as you like it. You're coon sellouts and coon agents. That's what you are. Liars, hustlers. I do listen because I want to monitor what he says. And yeah, sometimes I'm entertained. But I really wish black people. Listen, if he you call up again or anybody else calls up and he cuts you short. Because watch him try to expand this shit now because he, 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 he tries his best. To pretend that he wants to listen to what these people have to say. Because people like me, we call his ass up. So he has to try to pretend that he's interested. But he he, he has such thin patience with, the, with, with real shit that he ends up cutting them off. He's like, let me get to the bullshit. I'll keep the bullshit going for a half hour. Talks about he doesn't have time for some other shit. Somebody's going on too long. But yet, it, it, going on too long for him is going on two minutes. But yet, when a suspected white supremacist, as he calls them, or a tether goes on, he has time for the shit until the shit gets too deep talking about him. Call him out on this shit. Talk about his uh, white supremacist uh, in-laws. Even when people find out he got white people in the family. They try to ignore it. Some still like, oh man, I'm shocked. I ain't know that. Still people to this day. I didn't know that. But once you find out, call them on it. Call them out on that shit. Why don't you want to do that? Because you're scared? Because I notice when people call up, a lot of them call up, they're fucking scared straight. And they're scared because they think, man, I got I, he's going to cut me off. That's why they call up talking about, hey, brother Tariq. Yeah, I'm a big fan of yours, brother, and, and, you know, you're doing good things for our people. Now, somebody like me, I'll call up and ask, what exactly did you do for our people? Because I, I, I haven't seen it. I don't know what the fuck you did. Tell me what you did. Now, watch him start thinking about shit now as he hears this. Tell me what you did for black people with, without mentioning hidden colors. He's even talking about coming up with a hidden color six. You already seen enough. We saw all we had to see. Everything else flopped. That microphone check with AI characters. I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of those rappers, not the ones he was interviewing, but when you see the commercials, AI generated uh, unknown rappers. You got to stop using that AI shit. Because <clears throat> you're like, man, who the fuck rapper is that? <laughs> you trying to find him somebody's busy trying to find that rapper trying to figure out okay let me let me see if I can hear my man's material and you're like man who the fuck is this man <laughs> and you find out that he's nobody <laughs> the joke is on you he's nobody he gotta stop using that AI shit cause he's he wants to be cheap it, you, like he came up with the uh, microphone check you got a license you gotta pay to light and get the licensing fees for these uh some of this material. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to keep doing his low budget shit. See, the low budget shit is you get whoever you're interviewing, pay them whatever you're paying them. I wouldn't doubt if it's only 1500 If you want music, I haven't seen this microphone check because I haven't been able to hunt it down. But if you want music, you get the people you're interviewing to do their rap. Like, I'm sure that's what Busy being Grandmaster Cash are doing. I'm bolder than bold, badder than bad, the best MC life ever had. I bet you they're doing it there because you can't play the song because that's going to cost them. And he doesn't want to put that kind of money into the shit. Even though you put the money into the shit. <laughs> 
He always talks about the cameras used, but what makes a great documentary is the footage. Because I don't know about you, but when I watch documentaries, the stock footage of the actual events, that's what the fuck captivates me. Because sometimes you just can't get that shit someplace sometimes. You know? So you got to see the stock footage. That's why he'll do that with his uh, hidden colors. He'll just show pictures. Number one, there's no video to show a lot of times, but even if there were, he's not going to show that. He's going to show pictures and talk about the pictures because a lot of times you can get away with that shit and not pay any money. And some pictures, depending on how, how it goes, you know, you can't really tell that the picture came from a certain source because if it, like let's say if it's a picture of a painting unless it's marked like you see some of those uh shit with the watermarks on them you don't know or nobody can really verify that you didn't go to a museum and take a picture of that shit yourself or somebody else so that's why you can get away with that kind of shit but if it's like uh let's say if it's a picture of I know some people, oh, man, I'm bringing this shit up again. Matter of fact, I'm going to switch it around. I was going to say something else. But let's say if it's a picture of Martin Luther King getting shot in the right aftermath and you're on the scene, you took the picture. See, you can't get away with, you, you, you can't steal that because people know there weren't too many people on the scene to take the picture. So you can't say that that was everywhere. Or everybody, even if you got it from a magazine, you know who the pic, who the photographer was. That's how they do it. That's why you see before they didn't used to give photographers uh, credit. Even with music videos, they didn't used to say uh, such and such directed the video. Then they started giving them the credit, and then people started recognizing names and shit, like a Hike Williams. So that's why he uses that AI for that shit. He, he got to cut down on that shit. Because, uh, I mean, people are getting tired of seeing some mysterious looking motherfuckers. <laughs> Wonder, man, who the fuck are these people? So he, got, he, he has to stop them. Anyway, bombard this guy with some real questions. And ask him, I mean, they've been doing this, but again, he'll cut them off when they do ask. So, you know, that, that, that's the problem. He doesn't want to hear it because he knows he can't explain his lie. So you can't lie well enough. You just cut them off. So other than that, I think. Uh, kind of said what we had to say. uh and the other part of that quote is I was going to talk about with that WNBA shit too. You know, they've been trying to promote that shit heavy. We'll see how that shit goes next uh, season because right now, if the shit doesn't go well enough, they're going to have to uh, come up with some new controversy for next year. And I heard Patrick Mahomes and said they're trying to get him involved and in trying to get a Kansas City franchise. <laughs> Whatever it takes to promote it. But that's where if you're going to put a WNBA franchise someplace, you got to put it in places without an NBA franchise. They'll have more success that way. Now, Kansas City, they used to have a uh, NBA team. I think it was the Sacramento Kings. Apparently, that didn't do too well. Apparently, you know, Pittsburgh had a team, NBA team. Uh, Buffalo had an NBA team. San Diego had an uh, NBA team, which is the same team as the Clippers. And the Clippers uniforms in the 80s, those shits for fire. I don't know why they didn't just go back to some shit, some version of that shit, man. That shit, and the color combination, that shit was fire. I mean, god damn. That's one of the best uh, uniforms that went out of business, so to speak. You know what I mean? God damn. I don't know why they ain't fucking with that. But, um, you know, some places can't seem to uh, carry some teams for some odd reason. 
San Diego, maybe it's too close to L.A., and L.A. is taking on the business. You know, San Diego, they're down to the Padres. That's part of the reason why I wanted the Padres to win is because, you know, L.A. took their goddamn team and the football team, so at least, you know, if their baseball team could have beaten the Dodgers or some shit, man, damn. Serve them right. But, you know, it's, it's a shame that San Diego is the second largest city in LA, in California. And they can't, they only, they're down to one sports team. Oakland. <laughs> this shit's are gone. I, matter of fact, I think it's going to be gone next season because I think they, the A's are going to be playing in Sacramento. That shit is crazy. You know Sacramento, they're going to do what the fuck they can to make sure that the uh, A's can stay there. Just like San Antonio when uh, uh, the, uh, was it the Thunder that was playing in San Antonio? No, no, they're playing in Oklahoma City. Uh, the Seattle team, and then that's how they stayed there. Someplace, oh, San Antonio, I think they wanted a football team to stay there. I think they were trying to get them to play there. See, some cities and states, they're desperate for teams. You know, San Antonio is a major player within Texas, but apparently not within the U.S. That's all they got of the fucking um, Spurs, which is, you know, one of the best teams that ever did it. But, you know, when you are a city that's over a million people, you, it's like you almost got to have an NFL team, you know, that, that, that makes you, that puts you on the map. That puts you on the map. That's why a lot of people are like, why does Jacksonville still have a team? That's a good question. <laughs> but with that, I'm out of here.